Man, look at you. Sitting around all day like a bump on a log. You're about as lazy as a sloth, and frankly, your test scores in school have been dropping as well. It ain't looking good for your future. But what if we told you that it wasn't your fault? What if we told you that this laziness could actually be an infection and could even be passed on from person to person? What if laziness was caused by a parasite? Once known as the germ of laziness in southern states, the hookworm causes extreme tiredness and even a lower IQ. Get ready to get grossed out, Brainiacs, as we unpack this parasite. As with all parasites, the hookworm is a creature that lives by living off of other creatures. This tiny worm, which averages about 8 millimeters long, is spread when someone comes in contact with the eggs. Where would one come in contact with the eggs? Oh, you guessed it, contaminated soil. And we don't mean to gross you out, Brainiacs, but it's usually soil contaminated with feces. Yeah, these are really nasty parasites. Also, better wash your hands after handling a puppy or a kitten you don't know, because hookworms can absolutely infect your pets. And if you handle an infected puppy or accidentally stepped where it has gone uh, number two, then you could be the new home for these tiny worms. Here's how it works, and get ready for this one because it's an insane and pretty terrifying process if you ask us. If you step barefoot on dirt which contains the hookworm larva, the little dudes will stop at nothing to latch onto your skin and will quickly burrow their way inside your foot. Then they catch a ride in your bloodstream and make their way to your lungs. This will cause you to cough, and when you do, the hookworm will travel up and then back down your throat when you swallow. Now the hookworm is right where it wants to be, your digestive tract. Once inside your small intestine, they have now reached their desired home. You eventually will pass them through your system, but it can take up to a year, and the symptoms are not fun. When you're infected, you will experience cramps, nausea, fevers, loss of appetite, abdominal pain, itchiness in your foot from where they first entered your system, and if the worms last a long time, you can develop anemia, which is when you have a low red blood cell count. But here's the craziest symptoms of all. Anyone infected with hookworms over a long period of time will experience nutritional deficiencies and a condition known as ascites, which is when fluid builds up in your abdomen caused by an extreme lack of protein. And finally, children who have contracted this parasite can experience slow growth both physically and mentally from the lack of iron and proteins. To put it another way, Basically, the hookworm can really hurt your brain power as you grow up, and both children and adults who are infected get incredibly tired and not able to focus. And at one time, this parasite was so rampant in the South that the people who lived there were thought of as stupid by anyone they met. But it wasn't their fault. It was all the hookworm, the whole time. Now, we want to be clear here. All this was before the hookworm was discovered, and way before we knew how it worked, and how it affected the body. But the truth is that from the time hookworms first arrived in America in the 17th century via boats, all the way until 1902 when they were finally discovered, there was thought to be some sort of germ of laziness in the South. Rumors spread about how if you were from the South, then you were tired, couldn't put in a full day's work, and worst of all, were not that bright. But here's the thing, Brainiacs, in a way there kind of was such a germ. It's just that it was a worm, not a germ. If you did unknowingly catch the hookworm parasite, you would indeed feel the symptoms of tiredness and even have a lower IQ. The other factor that contributed to these rumors was probably the most serious of all. See, it wasn't just a few communities spaced out and about. Oh no. Experts estimate that at one time, 40% of the population that resided between the states of Texas to West Virginia were infected. You heard that right, 40%. No wonder people thought that anyone from the South was tired and unmotivated. They had worms. It wasn't until a medical zoologist from New York named Charles W. Stiles discovered the hookworm and was able to link these lazy traits it caused to being infected. 
His research began in 1902, when he was commissioned by the Department of Agriculture to help keep farm animals in the South healthy. But when he learned about this germ that caused laziness, his friends say he got obsessed with solving the riddle. And solve it he did. He theorized that if the southern states got rid of their hookworm problem, then a wham bam, they wouldn't seem as tired, lazy, and unmotivated. But local doctors didn't listen. They thought that he was an arrogant, pretentious know-it-all. It wasn't until a man named John Rockefeller, who was looking for a philanthropy project, heard of Stiles' discovery, and decided to invest. Thus, the mission to cure southern states of their laziness was on. Well, I mean, by cure, I mean cure the worms that cause the laziness, but look, you know what we're trying to say, Brainiacs. But this mission of cleansing the south of worms did not go over well. Remember, this was the first time that people had even heard of the worms, and the idea that so many of them could be affecting so many people was seen as offensive. I mean, think about it. Not only was some doctor coming into people's towns saying that they were all likely infected with worms, but that the reason their kids were having trouble in schools and the reason everyone in town was so tired and lazy was because they had parasites. But Rockefeller didn't give up. He put $1 million into anti-worm propaganda, and his organization started sending young doctors straight out of medical school down south so they could teach anyone and everyone who would listen about the dangers of hookworms. Slowly but surely, people came around, and doctors would set up makeshift clinics in town, and it sort of became an event for people to come and get dewormed. Families left and right would arrive with potato salads and fried chicken, and in some cases, people would even be asked to get married in the hookworm deworming tent. It really was an all-day party. People would be treated, doctors would teach anyone who would listen about proper hygiene, and slowly but surely, things started to change. Before these doctors had arrived, people just didn't know how important having good hygiene around the restroom was, and they even taught them how to build better and more sanitary outhouses. And while they couldn't buy every single person that came along new shoes, they could tell them the dangers of walking around barefoot, especially in areas that could be contaminated with hookworms. The treatment was simple, Epsom salt and thymol. Many times, this was a family's first encounter with any kind of pharmaceutical. And slowly but surely, and we mean slowly, the hookworm problem started to go away. But it took many, many years. In fact, it wasn't until 1985 that the hookworm was seen as truly written from the South. But things have also changed a lot since then. Some of the biggest factors that keep us all worm-free now are the fact that most people don't live in rural areas anymore. The majority of people live in cities, and that means paved streets. Combine that with healthier eating habits and the fact that everyone is now wearing shoes, and of course, there is now indoor plumbing, this means that the hookworm just can't thrive like it once did. Ah, but that doesn't mean that they don't exist. These little monsters absolutely are still around, but luckily there are safe and effective ways to treat them. Doctors will usually prescribe the medicines albendazole, mebendazole, or pirintelpamote. Preventative measures you can take are simple. Don't drink water if you don't know that it's clean. Properly cook and clean your food before eating it. Wash your hands before you cook and before you eat. And be sure to have some kind of footwear on if you know that the area in which you are walking could potentially have the larva in it. Keep yourself clean, Brainiacs, and you'll be keeping yourself safe from these little parasites too. Who would have thought that something could literally be causing your laziness? That there could be an actual infection that makes you seem dim-witted? Well, the world is a strange and sometimes scary place. And the hookworm is one such creature that could hold you back from reaching your full potential. But no need to worry. You know how to take care of yourself and practice good hygiene, Brainiacs. You'll be fine now that you know the scoop on the hookworm. And hey, if you find that you are particularly lazy, who knows? Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's the hookworm. We'll see you next time, Brainiacs. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. It really helps us out a lot, and it lets us continue making more fun and crazy science videos. And if you aren't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. We want you to know when our next video goes up, so you can stay the brainiest brainiacs you can be.